Good afternoon. I'm Brad, the Honest HVAC guy, and today I'm going to go over gas furnace operation. So whether you're a homeowner or a business owner and you have a gas furnace and you're basically just not a professional, but you want to understand how the equipment operates and then some of the main components within the equipment, I'm going to go over that today. So this will be helpful for you to understand the way that it works, but then also if you do have a breakdown and you need to call a service technician out to your place, um, this will help give you some insight so when you're talking to them you can be educated and and they're not going to be able to pull one over on you. So we'll dive into this furnace right now. All right. So with the doors removed, we're looking at the uh, the furnace here. This is a Lennox. The model number is ML180. And so it's a very common furnace. However, most furnaces in North America, regardless of what brand they are, they all have similar components and all the components are going to look very similar. So even if you don't have a Linux furnace, maybe you have a train furnace or a carrier furnace, um, it's still gonna have very similar components to this one right here. Uh, one thing I will mention is this is an 80% efficient furnace, and we know that uh, because the venting is all metal. On high efficient furnaces, anything that's 90% efficient or greater, you will see white PVC pipe as the venting. So that's an easy way to just visually know if you have a high efficient or just a mid-efficiency furnace. So Lennox ML180 furnace, here we go. First item I'll go over is the control board. That's the brains of the unit. It basically receives the signal from the thermostat, whether we're heating or cooling or running the fan. And it then sends the information to all the other components and tells everything else what to do. So the control board is the brains. Back behind the control board, this is the blower, wheel, and motor. So that's what actually moves the air through your home. Whether you're heating or cooling, uh, the, the blower motor inside your furnace is the main device that's delivering airflow throughout your home. So moving up to this upper chamber, this is all the gas combustion components. The first thing we see moving from the bottom up, this is called the burner box. So within this box, we have all the gas burners. This is where the gas actually ignites and the heat for your home is created. Uh, so within this burner box, there are gas burners themselves, uh, similar to what you might see on a gas cooktop or even on a barbecue, a gas barbecue grill, there's burners inside. And then there is an igniter. And so on most furnaces, the igniter is a hot surface igniter. So what it does is it glows orange, it gets super bright, and then the gas valve opens and when the gas blows across that glowing hot igniter, it combusts and you have, you have ignition. So the gas uh, igniter is inside this box. And then also there's one other component, it's called a flame sensor. And so uh, this is the, the backside of the flame sensor. But what this guy is doing is it's making sure anytime the gas valve is open and the, we're, put, we're burning and, and putting heat into your home, it's making sure the burners are actually lit. So the danger is if you have the flame go out for some reason, and then the gas valve continues to just put out gas, which is combustible, you know, that can build up and then, and then cause an explosion. So flame sensor, very important. Um, and then moving to the front of the burner box, we have these white plugs here, these white plugs here, and there's a pair in the back as well. These are all high temperature sensors. So they're making sure that the furnace is not getting too hot. These are also safety features. There's various situations that can arise. Uh, you might have the gas too high, your blower motor might fail. If any of these things happen, these temperature sensors are supposed to recognize the furnace is too hot and then shut down furnace operations. So these little guys are very important. The next piece moving up is the gas valve. This is what actually controls gas flow to the furnace. So it comes in the side from your gas meter uh, the gas valve is the gateway. It says yes or no. Uh, when it's open, it allows the gas to come through and to burn. The next piece moving up is this guy right here. All furnaces have these. Um, well, all induced draft furnaces, basically anything in the 80s or newer is gonna have one of these. The industry term is a combustion blower or an induced draft motor. But to understand what it does, it's basically an exhaust motor, okay? So it collects all the burnt gas that's being shot out by the burners. It pulls it 
up through the furnace and then it pushes it out your venting to the outside of the house. So combustion blower is moving the gas through the furnace and pushing it outside. And then there's one more safety device up here. This is called the pressure switch. It's a very common furnace failure, a very common part to, to fail. And so all furnaces will have these. Uh, on a newer furnace, it'll be a little round plastic piece like this, it's black. Uh, some of them will be gray plastic. And if you have an older furnace, it'll be a metal, like either a silver or kind of a bronze color metal housing. Um, but they're easy to recognize because they always have a tube coming out of them. And it's really, um, you know, one of the only portions of your furnace that's gonna have a tube uh, if you're an 80% efficient furnace. So it'll have this hose. And so what this switch is doing is it's verifying that as long as the furnace is running, um, that it's, it's making sure that the exhaust gas is actually being pushed up out of the chimney and that this motor hasn't broken and just allowing the gas to just build up inside, inside the furnace. So this is also a safety feature that's very important um, to be functioning properly for proper operation of the furnace. So that's kind of a good rundown of the individual components of an 80% efficient furnace. Uh, the next thing we're going to get into is how we can actually figure out if all these parts are working properly and how we can test it. And then additionally, we'll go over kind of just the sequence of operation of the furnace. So the next thing we're going to talk about is sequence of operation. And what that means is once the furnace receives a, a call from your thermostat that we want to heat the home, we need to know what are the steps your furnace is taking to um, actually start up, ignite, and then heat the house. And so this is going to be important if we want to figure out if there's something wrong with the furnace, if it's not operating properly. If we want to figure out why it's not operating properly, we need to understand first what it should be doing, and then we can look and figure out what is it not doing out of the list of things that it should be doing. So that's, uh, that's getting into the technical side and a little bit of troubleshooting. So that's what we're gonna work on today. So in order to understand the sequence of operation and then be able to check and verify if it's doing the proper things, you will need a multimeter. And so I have this Klein Tools multimeter. Uh, it's a really good meter. The nice thing about them is they're good quality, but they're also affordable. You can pick these up at any home. You can pick these up at any Home Depot. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly what the price is, but they're pretty reasonable and they're easy to use. So I definitely like, like the, the Klein multimeters. So the first thing that we're going to need to do on our multimeter is we're going to turn it on and you're going to have to figure out the volts scale. Um, so set your multimeter to volts and that's all going to vary depending upon what multimeter you have So I'm not in this video. I'm not going to explain how to do that um, You know if you guys buy a multimeter you can probably find another video <laughs> that explains how to use it So figure out how it works and then once you know that you can follow along at this point So we're going to set it into volts and then most multimeters will have a choice between volts AC or volts DC so DC volts are for anything automotive related. And then anything that's home related is gonna be AC. So if we're working on the house or the garage, we always, we pretty much always wanna be in AC mode. So on this guy, I gotta press this button to get to AC. Now we're in AC, I got my two test leads. So here we go. So the first thing, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to check, um, if we have the thermostat set to heat and we're asking the thermostat to heat, the first thing we want to check is the thermostat terminals. So this is the wire that connects directly from the thermostat up in the home to the brains of the operation, the control board. So we're taking the two leads. <clears throat> we're gonna put one on common. And you don't even need common. You could even just put it anywhere that there's basically metal uh, within the furnace, right? And then the other lead, we're gonna go to the first thing I'll do is verify the R terminal. So the R terminal will, no matter what, it'll always have power. It'll always read 27 volts AC. So as long as the furnace has power, this guy should read 27 volts. Now something to keep in mind is most furnaces have some kind of a door switch. So like for example, this furnace has this switch right here. 
And so this furnace will not run unless this door switch is activated. And that's a safety feature because they don't want you to, they don't want the furnace to kick on while you have it open. And if you don't know what you're doing, you could, you know, lose a hand in the blower motor or something. So if your furnace doors are off, you have to push the switch in in order for it to work. Um, you know, this, it's a safety feature. It's something that I can't recommend anybody does. Um, you know, you should always hire a service professional to do these type of tips. But if you are a service professional or you're going to take, uh, you know, take on some troubleshooting, that's, uh, that's on you. I can't legally advise you to do that, but I'll show you how we do it anyway. So I have this tool. Uh, it's a furnace bypass switch. And so you can get these uh, probably on Amazon. You can definitely get them at a furnace supply house. Uh, the brand on this is Supco, S-U-P-C-O. And so the way this piece works is it, uh, it has uh, magnets on it. And so it literally just magnets over and it holds this door switch in place. There we go. Sometimes you gotta kinda play with it to see what the right orientation is. But so the door switch went in and then I'm sure you guys saw as soon as I did that, this status LED came on, okay? And so that's because now the furnace has power. Most furnaces will have a status light, an indicator of some time to, type to let you know they have power. So that's probably the first thing to look at if you're gonna do a troubleshoot is just make sure the thing's got power. So look for an LED light. And then the next thing you can do is um, touch one of your black lead, touch your black lead to the metal, touch your red lead to the R terminal on the thermostat. Um, the thermostat has, uh, each terminal has a letter associated with it. So there's a W, a C, there's an R, there's a G, and a Y. So R is always gonna have 27 volts anytime the furnace has power. So we're gonna look, we see 27 volts there, so we know the furnace is on, um, it has power, and we know the control board is getting power. So then the way the furnace operates is when we want, when the thermostat wants to heat, what it does is it takes this 27 volts that comes out of the R terminal and it connects it with the W terminal up at the thermostat. So now you're gonna have that 27 volts is gonna be coming down through this white wire. So we got 27, it's leaving out through the red it's going into the thermostat. The thermostat is taking that same power and it's sending it back out with this W. So this is basically our signal in from the thermostat. And this is the thermostat, um, the thermostat telling us that we wanna heat. So I can look at my voltmeter and I can see 27 volts AC when I touch the R, okay? So the next thing I wanna look at is the W terminal. Now, right now the thermostat is off. So when I click on it, I see 0.2 volts. So it's very common on when you're working on furnaces, you'll never see zero volts. I shouldn't say never, but it's very rare you'll see zero volts. You'll usually see some really small ambiguous number. So basically if you see anything that's only a decimal point, that basically is a big fat zero. So we see zero on the W, that means the thermostat is not asking the furnace to heat. So right now everything is working as it should. Uh, we would be concerned if the furnace was running without this call, without 27 volts here, because that would mean somehow uh, it is running when it's not supposed to, okay? So that's the first check. The next thing that happens when you're calling for heat um, as soon as, as the thermostat asks for heat, this motor up here will turn on. And so this is the noisy, basically the noisiest thing within the furnace besides the blower motor. So you'll hear that thing kick on right away. And then what the, the control board does, the brains of the operation, is it's sending out voltage uh, and it's gonna check all these temperature sensors. So the first thing it does is it checks all the sensors and it makes sure that all the sensors say that it's safe to proceed with ignition. So the way we, we do that, and I'm just gonna pretend here because if I turn the furnace on and it runs, it's gonna be loud and then you won't be able to hear me. So we're not gonna do that. But what would happen is um, with the exhaust motor running, I can check, um, I can leave one lead just on the metal 
and then the red lead I can I can press on the steel part of each switch. So you want to make sure when you're testing electric electricity, you got to be touching the metal part of the connector and not the plastic. But so what will happen is if I go to the first and you can follow from the control board, you can follow the colored wire and where it's coming out at. So we're going to look at the first switch and we're going to test it and that's going to read 27 volts. And then if the switch is operating properly, we'll have 27 volts in, and then we'll have 27 volts out. And then this switch goes to the next switch. So this wire comes into this one. So now this sensor has to tell us that it's safe to proceed. So this sensor will get 27 in, and then if the sensor says everything is safe, it'll put 27 volts out. Now, if the sensor uh, does not or decides it is unsafe to operate because temperatures are too high, then it will not output 27 volts. It will only output 27 volts if the sensor says that it's safe to proceed. So if you see 27 here, 27 here, 27 here, and then that's the end of these switches. After this switch, it goes back to the control board, okay? And I'll go through a little bit later, but the control board has a diagnostic, um, procedure of its own where it'll tell you what's wrong with it if it's not working properly okay but then the next piece is the temperature sensor back here and this one um, is coming off these blue wires and so this one also has 27 volts in and 27 volts out and so the output on this one though it's not going back to the board it's going up to this pressure switch so if all these temperature sensors are saying that it's okay to proceed, then the next thing that the brains of the operation has to ask is it has to ask the pressure switch if it's safe to proceed. So the way we're testing that is the same as these switches. We want to see 27 volts coming in on one side, and we want to see 27 volts coming out on the other side. So as long as we have voltage in and voltage out, then that switch is saying, yes, it's safe to proceed with ignition. So the way that this switch is, is deciding if things are safe or not is it's measuring the pressure created by this exhaust motor. So um, if the exhaust motor is not functional, operating properly, or if it's not able to, um, to move enough exhaust gas or it's restricted, then this switch will not close and it will tell the furnace it is not safe to proceed. So that's kind of the first set of diagnostic steps. We want to check all of our temp sensors, and then we want to check the vacuum sensor, or the pressure switch, excuse me. And so if all these things are working properly, then the next step is that the furnace will proceed to ignition. So the next thing we're going to look at is going to be the combustion process. So now that um, the temperature sensors and the pressure switch have told the brains of the operation that it's safe to proceed. Um, that's all kind of one series of events, right? So if all those, ch all those checks are passed, then we move to the next step, which is going to be combustion. So the first step in combustion and the most noticeable step is going to be your igniter, your igniter warm up. So if you look within the combustion uh, burner box of your furnace, what you'll see is a bright glowing orange. And so that is always the first step. That's the igniter warming up. Once the igniter warms up, the gas valve, um, and this is all determined by the control board. So it's usually based on some kind of a timer series that within so many seconds of warm up, then the gas valve opens. And so what happens is the gas valve opens, it releases gas through the burners that go across the igniter and then combustion should take place, the gas should light, and then the flame sensor will see the signal from the burning gas, and so it'll know that the gas is being burnt and the gas is safe. So at this point, we have the combustion blower running, we have the gas burners being uh, or burning off, and then there's one more timer, which is gonna be the blower motor. So there's a, as long as all the switches, and these switches continue to monitor throughout the entire operation of the furnace. The pressure switch, the temperature sensors, the flame sensor, all this stuff is continually active and it's monitoring to make sure 
throughout the whole burn time. If anything comes up that, that is an unsafe situation, it's gonna cut off gas to the furnace. So as long as these pieces, because they can fail intermittently sometimes throughout operation, and that'll, that's what'll give you weird symptoms with your furnace where you know it'll run for a few minutes and then shut off and then run and then shut off. That's all indications that one of these switches is, is reading uh, something abnormal. And so it could be that the switch itself is bad, uh, or also it could be there is actually some kind of abnormality coming up. And so we'll get into that a little bit later. But at this point, we have combustion, the blower is running, the furnace should basically just continue indefinitely until the thermostat uh, decides that we've reached the proper temperature in the home. And then once the thermostat says that we're at the proper temperature, it will stop sending uh, 27 volts out through the W wire. And once the control board doesn't see 27 volts at the W wire, then it will shut off all the gas and it will just run the blower for a little bit and then it will completely shut off. So that's basically your, your whole uh, heating cycle. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a false call for heat. So I'm gonna use these jumper wires. Uh, this is something that technicians use and so this will this will basically mimic the thermostat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, uh, there's a piece of, just a metal wire in between that, that allows these two to connect. So what we'll do is we're gonna make a connection from the uh, output of the board to the input of the board on W, which is what the thermostat would normally do. We're gonna create this manually, and then that's gonna start the sequence of operation. So I'm going to, uh, I'll talk through it, and uh, you can kind of see it happen first uh, first hand account and hopefully you guys can hear my voice so here we go we'll, we'll talk about what's happening so the first thing is the therm the say the thermostat set for 72 degrees so uh, then the temperature in the house is 71 degrees right so now the thermostat knows hey we need to turn on the heat and we need to raise the temperature in the home one degree so the thermostat takes the 27 volts that it has and it sends the 27 volts back out to the furnace on the W wire and it asks for heat. So we're gonna go ahead and click the W. I was grabbed onto the plastic, not the metal. So, first thing that happens, combustion blower kicks on. All these safeties are checking temperature. This is checking gas or checking pressure to make sure the combustion blower is working. The next thing we're gonna wanna see is ignition. You can see the orange igniter glowing right now. So that means all the safeties said it's okay to proceed and create heat. So after the igniter heats up, we're gonna open the gas valve. You can hear it click sometimes, we'll be quiet. So you can hear that light click and that's followed by combustion. You could hear almost immediately the burners lit and now you can see kind of a nice blue glow going on. So now we know the gas is burning. All these sensors are still monitoring. They're making sure we're not overheating our, ex our exhaust is being vented properly. And so now the last thing is that once uh, the time limit is reached from the control board, it'll kick on the blower and that's the complete process. It'll just continue until the thermostat decides that we've heated the home enough and then it'll shut off. So at this point, if we had, um, if the furnace wasn't operating properly or if the gas was kicking on and off, then what we would do is we would get our leads, we would turn our voltmeter on to voltage, we would make sure that we're selecting volts AC because that's what furnaces use is AC current. And then basically one of these test leads, uh, the black test lead will just push to the bare steel of the furnace. And then with the red lead, we'll go ahead and just check all the sensors and figure out uh, which sensor is not operating properly. So the first thing we can do is we can check 
um, each of these temperature sensors. So I see 27 volts out, 27 in, 27 in, 27 out. So we know these sensors are okay because they're taking voltage in and they're putting voltage out. And the same with the sensor back here. We're gonna look at voltage in and then we're gonna look at voltage out and we're gonna see 27 volts on the display for each of those. So we know all the temperature sensors are okay. The next thing we're gonna look at is our pressure switch. That's this guy up here. And uh, this one works in the same way. So we're gonna see, oops, don't, touch the, uh, don't touch the wheel there, that's moving. We're gonna see voltage in and then we're gonna see voltage out. And so if there is an issue with the pressure switch, if this hose was clogged, or if the exhaust motor is not working, what I would expect to see is I would expect to see 27 volts coming in, but then I would not see 27 volts going out. So if we find a component that has voltage in but no voltage out, then we can make the assumption that there's something wrong with either that component itself or the thing that that component is measuring. So if a pressure switch isn't outputting 27 volts, it could mean the switch is bad inside, but it also could mean that there's a problem and it's not able, uh, the, the, maybe the motor isn't venting properly. So we'll go into that a little bit more in depth into how you can measure and figure out, is it the sensor that's bad or is it actually the component the sensor is hooked up to? Because that's, that's part two of being a technician is you gotta figure out uh, you know, is it the sensor or is it the thing that's being sensed? So you got, we gotta be able to determine the difference between those two. So we'll go into that. But at this point, everything's working good. 27 in, 27 out. Um, and then the gas valve is gonna be the same way. It's got these two plugs on the top. So we can look and we can see 27 in and we can see 27 volts out. So we know, actually I take that back, this one works different. This one doesn't have 27 in and 27 out. This one has 27 in, and then the other side is a common, a common leg. So what you can do is you can just put your leads, one on each, on each tab, and then you should read 27 volts. Because this one isn't just a sensor, it's actually, um, it's got a coil inside, so it's actually, you can read right across at 27 volts. So gas valve is working properly. Everything's working good on this furnace. So that's a pretty good, um, a pretty good starter to the way that the combustion process operates. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to check out the next part in this series, which is gonna go through and explain a little more in depth how we can troubleshoot each of these components individually so that if we do have a furnace breakdown, we can diagnose and go through an order of operations and figure out, is it the sensor that's bad or is it actually the item that it's sensing is not functioning properly? So there'll be a couple different tools that we'll go through and then also the procedure for that. So take a look, I know you'll like it.